the WCW Superstar Series, my favourite wrestling tapes to rip apart for the sake of my own amusement. This one might be difficult to laugh at though, because there's nothing funny about the macho man Randy Savage. Our man's nothing but intensity and it doesn't matter what Randy says, it always comes out sounding a million times better with that instantly recognisable macho man voice. Still, a sit down interview with the madness is something of a rarity, Macho had a lot to say in his promos but we didn't get a whole lot of behind the scenes interviews with Randy, so let's take a look at this WCW video tape and see if we learn anything about one of wrestling's most legendary superstars. The sweet sound of WCW Superstar Series techno boink music, how I've missed you. The first question Randy answers is a big one, it's probably the most important question on this whole video tape, and it's a question that many would ask Randy if he were still with us today. What does the madness mean? Exactly what is macho madness? Macho madness means… Uh, <laughs> it means nothing, but it means everything. Ok, not the answer I was expecting, but it's still deep man, really really deep. It means… Oh, he's still answering. Uh, riding the edge of a lightning bolt across the sky and being like a human torpedo. Ok, lightning bolt across the sky, human torpedo, got it, makes sense. After all your uh, training wait, wait, wait. and all your preparation and all your education for the moment arrives. Ok. Macho madness is letting it go. Oh, oh, right, ok Randy, we get it, we can move on now. Doing it after you've prepared for that moment what? where you can show the other person you're wrestling, all the fans and yourself what you're all about. I've, uh, I, I've forgotten the question now. And how high you've come in the career that you've chosen, that's what Macho Madness is all about to the Macho Man Randy Savage. Ok, let's recap. Macho Madness is nothing, but it's everything. It's riding a lightning bolt across the sky, it's being like a human torpedo, it's remembering your training, preparation and education for when the moment arrives. It's all about letting it go so you can show your opponent, the fans and yourself what you're all about and how far you've come. That's uh, quite the answer, but now I feel more enriched and more complete now that I know what the madness is all about. I, uh, I, I have no idea what it fucking means. Now, one of the reasons Randy Savage works and people connect to Randy Savage is he's got a real in-your-face, screw you, I'm going to do it my way view of the world. Speaking from experience there, Eric, did Randy tell you to go screw yourself at some point? Sounds like it to me, brother. And people would like to be like that. His signature move is the flying elbow drop from the top rope. That's just when I get to the top rope and point to the stars as high as I can. And right before I jump, I realize that I might do more damage to myself than the other guy. Macho's elbow drop was a thing of beauty. There's discussions to be had about who had the best elbow drop in wrestling. HBK's elbow, for example, is definitely a contender, but not this. This is, uh, uh yeah. But Randy had his own unique way of pulling off the elbow drop and again, it's a thing of beauty. When Randy went to the top rope, every fan stood on their feet in excitement. When I take off from that rope, I have no control about where I'm going. Hopefully I've calculated it, but uh, that person's not always laying there, you know, when I get there, you know, but uh, when he is and when I connect, it's pretty devastating. And of course, the world famous, oh yeah. I started saying oh yeah, you know what I mean, and just different versions of oh yeah, because <laughs> This is the greatest wrestling tape that has ever been released. You mean to tell me we're going to learn why Macho Man said oh yeah all the time? We aren't even 5 minutes in and we're getting a full blown education here folks. WCW should have been charging for this. No, no wait, they did charge for this. When I'm out there and I'm getting chills right now, it's just that when I feel the power, when I feel the power of the people and the energy from the people and knowing what I'm about to do and uh, knowing that I'm going to feel that rush doing it. I see where this is going. It just, uh, you know, it just, 
it instead of saying anything that made sense or answering a direct question. You know, I'd start out by saying, oh yeah, and that just got me in the mood for anything. You know, if anyone else would have given this non-answer, then I would have pointed and laughed at them, but when Macho says it, his empty words are bizarrely filled with meaning and purpose. Randy Savage was on a different wavelength, another level of passion mixed with that intensity mentioned earlier, and anything this man says instantly holds more weight, it's insane. Macho Man could talk about the importance of getting a good night's sleep, and you'd be in bed at 8pm every night and making sure you do what Randy Savage says. After a very successful career in wrestling for other organizations, other organizations, any mention of WWF makes a spooky demon appear, so don't do it. Savage joined the WCW. In 1994, I decided to come to uh, WCW because it was uh, a job that paid extremely well. Pretty motivating for me to come someplace different. Oh, okay, not for the money. For one thing, and also uh, a lot of the wrestling talent. It started to come to WCW, and I wanted to be a big fish in a big pond, not a big fish in a little pond. Shots fired at Vince McMahon in his little pond. It is funny though that McMahon thought that Randy was done from an in-ring perspective. Randy had a lot more to give and he proved that in World Championship Wrestling. He also brought along a sweet Slim Jim sponsorship which I'm sure delighted Eric Bischoff. And a lot of times things change and you gotta adapt to change. And before it was somewhere else, but now it's WCW. He helped Hogan at Starcade 94 in Nashville. Starcade 94, the Starcade we must not mention, or else another spooky demon may appear. Their first match was at the Clash of the Champions. Macho talks about the Monster Maniacs versus the Three Faces of Fear match at Clash of the Champions. 1995 Clash of Champions, Monster Maniacs against the Three Faces of Fear, and uh, I believe that the Hogan was my enemy worse than all three faces of fear times one billion. Ooh, getting down and dirty now. Remember, this was recorded when Match left the black and white to form the wolf pack with Big Kevin Nash. But still, nothing beats Savage talking bad about Hogan. You don't know if he really means what he says or if he's hamming it up for the interview. And that's just the way it is, the way it was, and the way it always will be. Never said anything like that in my life. So the Monster Maniacs is a dead file and just uh, bringing it up, you know, just gets the blood to boiling and everything and that's just the way it is with me and him. It was no surprise that Savage and Flair would begin a feud. God, these two wrestled constantly during Macho's early days in WCW. This is a match we watched quite a few times on Reliving the War. Watching with the lovely ladies. Just never like Ric Flair. <laughs> uh, nature Boy Ric Flair, he was... Uh, he was a premier wrestler for a long time, and I respect him for that, you know, but uh, me and Ric Flair personally and business-wise, in the ring, out of the ring, we don't mix, and some people are like that. And uh, Ric Flair is very flamboyant, Macho Man's really flamboyant, but we're flamboyant in different ways. He's completely on the money here. Charisma and flamboyance is something a wrestler just has, and it's not something that can be copied or ripped off. You have to have your own it factor. Savage and Flair were both charismatic and flamboyant while being polar opposites. Uh, our heads in different places, you know, and that's all there is to it. We then see clips of the Flair vs Savage Great American Bosch match, and we then see the Saturday night fight between the two that went all the way out to the streets. Imagine driving along and you see Randy Savage in full gear standing in the middle of the road. Best day of your life. Next up, it's the Flair Bash at the Beach match. There's no commentary here from Macho. And then we move on to World War III 1995. Randy won the inaugural World War III Battle Royal. Well, that, that was just about the toughest way you could ever win a match. And that's that, uh, you know, 60 wrestlers, 59 aren't you. <laughs> and only one is you. You know, and you're betting on yourself to win. So that's kind of hard, you know, odds to go against. But uh, uh, in order to win the title at World War III, you have to uh, go against those odds. We are down with this victory. Savage achieved his goal of winning the World Heavyweight Championship. 
and it gives me chills just thinking about it right now because that was something that I wanted to go to WCW to attain and then I actually rose to the occasion. I was the clutch person that I always knew that I was and I got it and having it and uh, just being able to reflect why I came to WCW and being able to put that belt around my waist and at least for one day and it was more than a day to be the WCW World Heavyweight Champion been was so great i just can't even tell you yeah i agree but the finish was the usual hulk hogan bullshit next up it's flair versus savage at starcade savage loses the belt but he wins it back the following month then i lost the belt you're right and i lost it to the nature boy rick flair first of all losing the belt you know it's gonna hurt you want to be the world heavyweight champion forever because it feels so good to be the champion. So losing it is going to hurt, but losing it to the nature boy Ric Flair, who's going to brag about it for the next millennium of years, <laughs> is just crazy. The Macho Man reclaimed his championship on Monday Nitro in January. January 22nd, 1996, on Nitro, number one television show in the world. I beat Ric Flair, and it was painful the time that I didn't get that match with Flair, and I couldn't take the belt away, but on January the 22nd, when I finally beat that punk, in my eyes... Even the way he says punk is absolutely glorious. Punk, punk, and my feelings for him being so, you know, way out there, it was a, a great thrill, to say the least. Now Elizabeth returns to wrestling and she has an on-off relationship with Macho on TV. At Super Brawl, Flair wins the belt back and it's all thanks to Elizabeth. She painted her what? shoe to Ric Flair! She, he's got Liz's shoe! He now I can't believe it! Yeah, I remember that night really well. Uh, night of betrayal, uh, lost the uh, title to Flair, which uh, uh, only could have happened if Elizabeth wouldn't have helped Nature Boy Flair win the match, the way I feel. Elizabeth has turned on Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan is coming! Because, uh, as you know, Elizabeth and I were married and uh, we had already gone through a divorce. I could be wrong here, but I don't think the divorce was ever mentioned on TV. So it's kind of interesting hearing Macho talk about this. Again, I could be wrong, though. And it was kind of like an honor amongst thieves uh, thing. We got back together in the first place, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> we don't even have an honor amongst thieves pact. And uh, so that was not a great night for the Macho Man Randy Savage, but I considered it another test. A test in life, a test in wrestling, a uh, test in my character. And I always like to test my character because I always want to know how to be stronger. Not just stronger in the gym, but stronger in my mind and in my heart. That's a great way of taking this unforgivable betrayal. With Elizabeth gone, Savage just got mentally stronger. The choice was simple. World belt or smooth brain. Well, when I left, I took half of everything. Half the money, half the property. And I don't care. You know something? You know what? I should, you know what? I... Half! I take half his shit. But that was nothing because last night I took it all. For Randy. This is Slamboree 96 when Randy got suspended. Slamboree 96 was the Macho Man Randy Savage thinking straight. Rarer than a gold NWC cart. And conniving like everybody else and not going off at the handle and uh, plotting and setting the nature boy Ric Flair up. I had to get his confidence before I can get close to him. He knew what was after him and he made it really, really, really hard for me to get to him. But I did get him in my trap and I worked my plan and I planned my work and I got him. Oh my god. And I worked my plan and I planned my work and I got him. I worked my plan and I planned my work. That's, th that's beautiful. I'm still in that. Not enough guys planning their work these days. They gotta work their plan and plan their work. Absolutely beautiful. The new world order came to everyone's attention after the hostile takeover. Ah, uh, let's hear what Machu thinks about the debut of the NWO. Bash of the Beach, 96, birth of the NWO, and uh, the birth 
of the Macho Man Randy Savage being more paranoid than I was before. Ooh, Macho getting more paranoid? That's something we don't need. What is he oh doing? My God! Is he the, the NWO change wrestling. And the months ahead were filled with surprise. <laughs> Hollywood hairpiece Hogan. Even Vincent's like, you do know you look dumb as hell right now, right? Clips of the Savage vs Hogan match at Halloween Havoc plays out next. The next part gets skipped over big time, but in short, Elizabeth would help Macho, Hogan would end up tricking Liz into joining the NWO, and as a reward for joining the New World Order, the Macho Man was given Elizabeth back as his manager. You gotta adapt to change sometimes. I was fighting the NWO and then I realized I was fighting myself. Next up, it's the DDP vs Savage rivalry. You should know by now how good this was and if you don't, go back and watch it all. Like right now. DDP Diamond Dallas Page. I used to pretend that I didn't know his name. You know, when he was challenging me, I wouldn't even mention his name for a while because, you know, I, I knew him as a wrestler with a great work ethic. and. Uh, wanting to make it really, really bad as a superstar, and I just didn't feel like, uh, I felt like he needed to prove himself before he wrestled the Macho Man Randy Savage. Yep, this video is gonna skip over a whole lot, but Savage wouldn't even grace DDP with his presence in the ring. He would only talk to him from up in the audience and he would frequently forget Paige's name and he'd act like Paige was below him. The rivalry though did wonders for DDP's career. And I believe the Diamond Dallas Page, now that I reflect back on that year, and it was a tough year, proved to the Macho Man Randy Savage that he truly is a superstar. We then get clips of the Page vs Savage 1997 pay-per-view trilogy, Spring Stampede, The Great American Bash and Halloween Havoc. I, I believe that Halloween Havoc in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, that I decided that Diamond Dallas Page is a superstar. And I believe that the fans respect him, and I respect him too. I think he's a great wrestler, and I think he's a tough wrestler. You know, I hope Page has watched this video tape. Macho Man's putting our guy over big time here, and for fans, it's really great hearing this come from Match himself because while we always knew Savage respected Dallas a lot, we never actually heard it from the man himself. So, awesome stuff. Next up, Lex Luger vs Macho Man, it's sold out. I remember that Lex Luger match, it sold out. He has been taking madness to an all new level lately. A match that I was looking forward to because I figured that it was going to be the be all end all, it was going to be the end of the rule. Oh, trust him in. And uh, here's a cover, one, two. Oh, there, oh, there she, she is. Goes. That's the bandana. Yes, right. That's the one Savage threw her. Now she's using and it, as it was all going to be settled and really nothing was settled as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I hear you, Macho Man. The Lex vs Savage rivalry went on a bit too long. It was pretty much ongoing in one way or another ever since Lex returned to WCW on the first episode of Nitro. The prelude of the rack. And I can't blame Lex Luger for that because he really didn't know what happened. Next up, another Hogan vs Savage match. This time, it's the uncensored cage match. We're in the middle of Savage going absolutely crazy with paranoia and this paranoia made him leave the NWO. The ending of this match was a head scratcher though. Sting came to help Savage and Savage turned on Sting. It muddied the waters in a storyline that was already very, uh, very muddy, I guess. Macho then got himself a title shot against Sting at Spring Stampede 1998. I won, I beat Sting with help from the NWO. Okay, no doubt about it. You know what I mean? And I'm not uh, gonna sit here and lie about it, but uh, I did. Uh, capture the World Heavyweight Championship belt. The NWO, professional wrestling. And I'm not going to apologize for things that I've done in the past. It really becomes dangerous. He went for a wagon wheel. Oh. You know the damage that way? This has been one of the darndest events I've and ever seen. And I'm not going to continually point a finger at people that have done things to me. You know, sometimes you're on the, the good end of the stick and sometimes you're on the short end of the stick. Macho was trying to put across that the way he won the title was wrong, but Macho, mate, nobody cares, trust me. This is far, far away from the most controversial championship change in WCW history, so take the win, man, enjoy the victory. Beating Sting on pay-per-view is a great achievement. So uh, 
uh, that's it's something that happened. History is going to point toward that, and it's going to have that dark cloud hanging over me for that uh, championship. Well, I think he knows the deal, and if he doesn't know the deal now, he'll learn it later. And, but I got some help from uh, some people. I didn't ask for the help, but it was just there. And I was the opportunist, and I took the opportunity to uh, capture that World Heavyweight Championship belt. The very next day, Savage lost the title on Monday Nitro to Hogan. I lost the belt the next day on Nitro because uh, Hollywood Hogan used his creative control clause to get the belt back. Only joking, Hogan never used that clause. Never, never, ever. Challenged me and I was quick to defend it because of the fact that I don't like Hollywood Hogan very much. Uh, I wanted to, well, I think that I, I should have made him suffer by not giving him the title shot is what I should have done. That would, that's what a rational person would have done, but I'm not rational. I'm, you can say that again. But I'm not rational. I'm the madness. I'm the Macho Man Randy Savage. So when the challenge came out, I quickly accepted it. And then <laughs> I had a bad situation happen to me uh, with uh, the hitman Brad Hart. And uh, it was messy, just like I said about the Sting situation. Sometimes you can't, you know, predict the future, which really you never can predict the future, but uh, it, I never knew it would be this crazy with the hitman Bret Hart doing what he did. Next up, Randy talks about the Wolf Pack and why he started this new splinter group within the New World Order. I joined the Wolf Pack because I wanted to break away from Hollywood Hogan. And I didn't care what we called ourselves. I didn't care anything about anything. Uh, I needed some help. I was one person against everybody, okay? So I found an alliance and a few people, and I figured to get the uh, big kahuna and to bring him down, no matter how I felt about these other guys, uh, I felt like we were strength in numbers. It's a shame Randy had to take time off in the middle of the Wolfpack run. I can guarantee that the group's story arc would have played out a lot differently if Macho and eventually Sting didn't get injured. And otherwise I would be, uh, I was not going to win this cause. So we formed, we formed the Wolfpack and we were very successful. I think the Wolfpack stands for a bunch of rebels, a bunch of gunslingers with prices on their head, uh, like Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, you know, uh, Billy the Kid, and I think I'm the lone wolf of the wolf pack. I think that uh, when it gets right down to it, I'm the rebel of rebels. I like it, the rebel of rebels. Macho's still trying to stand out on his own, even though he was an original member of the core wolf pack group. And that's what I was satisfied in uh, being anyway. The real wolf pack leader is the macho man Randy Savage. Oh, whoa, whoa, that goes against what was said on Nitro. Nash specifically said that there was no leader and everyone was equal. So yeah, macho thinks otherwise, interesting. I anointed Kevin Nash because I have a secret agenda. Oh, do tell me more. And that agenda will be uh, realized as time goes on, keep an eye on the Macho Man Randy Savage. Ah, uh, again, if only Macho didn't get injured. Granted, he could be talking a whole load of nothing here and I'd be willing to bet that that was the case too. Simply because no one knew what was going on in WCW on a daily basis, never mind a weekly or monthly basis. While no one knows Macho Man's future. And that's the video over. There's no one to really point out here in the special thanks. I looked up Bruce Singman and the only relevant name that came up was a lawyer in California. Donna Seaman's still here though, so good job Donna, well done. Another decent WCW Superstar Series tape then. This one and the Sting video have been the best so far. I've made a point of going into these with low expectations because, as we all know, expectations the gateway to disappointment. But with the right mindset, you can still find little things to like about these tapes and it's always fun watching them back. There's more to come, DDP, Sid, NWO, another Sting video, Nature Boy Ric Flair and Kevin Nash. I'll check these all out in future uploads, so please like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this one, and please, take care. The future for the Macho Man Randy Savage, I can calmly and confidently say, don't blink, it's gonna be the bomb.